Praise God. That is what the last few chapters here in Psalm have been about. Praising God. Because God is good. And God has done some pretty amazing things for you, for myself, and for the writers of these Psalms. Um, today we'll be jumping into Psalm chapter 68. Um, and Joxer is with me. He's just off of camera right now. Hey, Joxer, come here. Psalm 68 is what we will be reading. Um, so I invite you to grab your Bibles, read along with me as we read through Psalm 68. It's a, for the choir director, a song, and it's a Psalm of David. Um, he hasn't written all of the last ones. But he has written a few of them. Um, but yeah, this is uh, Psalms is written to a people in exile. And it's this reminder that we can praise God during the bad times and through the good times. Because God is good. God is faithful. Um, and he loves us. Even though we might sin. Even though we might be in the middle of discipline. There is love. Um, so uh, yeah. Um, BibleGateway.com. Bible app. Two great resources. I like physical Bible. If you don't have a physical Bible and you'd like one, send me a private message and, you know, I'll try to hook you up with one. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's jump into Psalm 68. Sorry, there's a bird making a really weird sound outside. I don't think my mic's picking up. All right. Rise up, O God, and scatter your enemies. Let those who hate God run for their lives. Blow them away like smoke. Melt them away like wax in a fire. Let the wicked perish in the presence of God. But God, let the godly rejoice. Let them be glad in God's presence. Let them be filled with joy. Sing praises to God and to his name. Sing loud praises to him who rides the clouds. His name is the Lord. Rejoice in his presence. Father to the fatherless, defender of widows, this God whose dwelling is holy. God places the lonely in families. He sets the prisoners. Oh, oh I get it. Sorry. God places the lonely in families. So, like, if someone's lonely, gives them a family. I understand that. At first, I had to reread that. Sorry. Continuing uh, verse 6. He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy. But he makes the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. Oh, God, when you lead your people out from Egypt... When you marched through the dry wasteland, interlude, the earth trembled and the heavens poured down rain before you, the God of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. You set abundant rain, O God, you uh, to refresh the weary land. There, your people finally settled. And without a bountiful harvest, O God, you provided for the needy people. The Lord gives the word. And a great army brings the good news. Enemy kings and their armies flee. While the women of Israel divide the plunder. Even those who lived among the sheepfolds found treasures. Doves with their wings of silver and feathers of gold. The Almighty scattered the enemies. Uh, the enemy kings, like a blowing snowstorm on Mount Zalmon. The mountains of Bashan are majestic, with mighty peaks stretching high into the sky. Why do you look with envy, O rugged mountains, at Mount Zion, where God has chosen to live? Where the Lord himself will live forever, surrounded by unnumbered thousands of chariots, the Lord came from Mount Sinai into his sanctuary. When you ascended to the height uh, to the heights, you led a crowd of captives. 
you received gifts from the people, even from those who rebelled against you. Now the Lord God will live among us there. Praise the Lord. Praise God our Savior for each day he carries us in his arms. Interlude. Our God is a God who saves. The Sovereign Lord rescues us from death. But God will smash the heads of his enemies, crushing their skulls of those who love their guilty ways. The Lord says, I will bring my enemies down from Bashan. I will bring them up from the depths of the sea. You, my people, will wash your feet in their blood, and even your dogs will get their share. Your possession, or pro, procession, possession, pro, procession, has come to view, O oh God. Procession has come to view, O oh God. The procession of God and King as he goes into the sanctuary. Singers are in front, musicians behind. Between them are young women playing trombones, or tambourines, sorry. Tambourines. I don't know why all of a sudden I couldn't read. Uh, verse 26. Praise God, all you people of Israel. Praise the Lord, the source of Israel's life. Look, the, the little tribe of Benjamin leads the way. Then comes a great throng of rulers from Judah, and all the rulers of Zebulun and Naphtali. Summon your mighty, summon your might, O God. Display your power, O God, as you have in the past. The kings of the earth are bringing tribute to your temple in Jerusalem. Rebuke these enemy nations, these wild animals lurking in the reeds. This herd of bulls among the weaker calves. Make them bring bars of silver in humble tribute. Scatter the nations that delight in war. Let Egypt come with gifts of precious metals. Let Ethiopia bring tribute to God. Sing to God, you kingdoms of earth. Sing praises to the Lord. Interlude. Sing to the one who rides across the ancient heavens, his mighty voice thundering from the sky. Tell everyone about God's power. His majesty shines down on Israel. His strength is mighty in the heavens. God is awesome in his sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Praise be to God. May God add a blessing of the reading of Psalm 68. Um, so before I get into things that stood out to me, things that I want to talk about, there is a part here highlighted in blue, which means that it foreshadows something in the Old Testament or the Old Testament kind of refers back to this. So uh, Psalm 68, verse 18, which reads, When you ascended to the heights, you led a crowd of captives. You received gifts from the people, even from those who rebelled against you. Now the Lord God will live among us there. So here, Paul actually quotes this psalm when he describes the generosity of Jesus to the Ephesians in Ephesians 4, 7, and 8. That's kind of cool. So yeah, Paul basically quotes this section here in Ephesians 4, 7 to 8. So that's, um, you know, the New Testament coming back and pointing this out. So it's kind of cool just how it connects the entire uh, Bible and the entire scripture. And now when you read Ephesians 4, it just gives that much deeper insight and knowledge into the mindset of the people that were receiving the words, right? Because they would have remi rem been reminded of this psalm because, um, you know, this was written also, you know, to people that were in exile. This was written to people that um, were feeling a little lost, feeling maybe abandoned, and God steps in. So Ephesians four is all about the unity of the body. So Ephesians four 
7 and 8 reads, However, he has given each one of us... Wait, am I reading the right section? 4, 7 to 8. However, he has given each one of us a, se a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, and here it is, when he ascends to the heights, he led captives, a, le a crowd of captives, and gave gifts to his people. So it, this also gives a little bit of insight into this section too, because, um, you know, that idea of that special gift, special gifts of his people, the different tribes got things. This opens up uh, an interesting thought, actually. Um, and that's all it is right now, a thought. Um, so in this part, you know, it's almost talking about like these groups of people, and these groups of people that are in exile, the 12 tribes went into exile and they all had special roles and special gifts and like special pieces of land that were uniquely theirs. So this is like almost talking to groups of people. Then later on, as Paul's quoting this verse, it's like, yeah, there's these group of people, but also you as an individual. And that, that mind shift change that we are both part of a group yet individuals is a really cool one. Um, and I feel like we have a tendency to focus on one over the other. Um, and, you know, we're in a very individualistic uh, place right now, but that group identity is also so important. Um, and those things coexist in our lives all the time, right? I'm a Canadian, I'm a Christian, I am Jeremy. Um, you know, those are kind of some of those degrees, right? First and foremost, I'm a Christian, uh, especially religion, how I want to identify, you know, things like that. Then there's, you know, the nationality, you know, I'm Canadian. I'm part of, you know, what that means, um, to be born, you know, and raised in this land type deal. Right. Um, I just heard how someone could twist that. Please don't twist that. I, I'm not trying to make any sort of special statement through that. Um, and then, you know, there's, um, you know, my individualness, right? I am also Jeremy. That is my given name. Um, you know, and I am an individual, right? So uh, I kind of coexist in those mindsets as well. As I'm sure you do, even if you're not Canadian, you know, even if you're not a Christian and you're watching this, um, you know, thank you for coming in. And if you are a Christian, thank you for coming in as well. Um, so yeah, that group mindset I thought is an interesting thing. My cat is like, do anything to pet me. And I oblige. I'm sorry. My cat's going around, headbutting everything, trying to headbutt me. Give me more pets. Okay, come on up, Joxer. I'm less distracted when you're actually in my arms. All right. Well, if my camera goes flying, it's because he decided to pull the cable. He does that sometimes. All right. Uh, so now some other things that jumped out at me. Um, once again, this is all about praising God. Here are these people in the middle of, you know, exile, feeling bad. And this is one of those reminders, right? Here is what God has done in the past. You know, and this might have been written right after, uh, you know, a big success of David, but it was kind of given out to people that are in exile, people that are hurting. And it's that reminder of what God has got us through. And uh, that reminder also is about what God is doing in the present. So God has done stuff, something and he is doing something. And then, you know, especially as Christians, we can look towards what Jesus did and our future is secure so that we can be that living sacrifice here right now today. Um, so that is one of those things that really jumps out at me and praising God, praise his name, um, which is also really cool, uh, being in God's presence. And then uh, one of the things that I stumbled on, verse six, made it stand out to me, obviously. So God places the lonely in families, not necessarily biological families. Sometimes it's found families. Sometimes it's communities. Uh, but God basically is looking after the lonely. Our churches do that all the time. Not only 
to people that believe, but people that are outside of our faith. We do a lot to help them out in our town. I know of like, you know, ministries that I'm a part of with teenagers, um, you know, that welcome everybody, the popular and the unpopular, the pariahs sometimes. Um, there are ministries out there that are looking after the single mothers who don't have time to maintain any sort of friendship because all their time is devoted to like either working or looking after the kids or both. Um, you know, there's uh, outreaches to all of that and it's Defender of the Widows, which uh, I think that last one sends to. And one of the other things that really stood out to me too is a father to the fatherless. I grew up without knowing my father and that promise is something that I've seen played out in my lives, my life. Okay, come on up. Yes, we can hear you. I think everyone can. I'm saying you can come up. Come up. So being a father to the fatherless, I think, is really important. Um, and it's something that really stood out to me as well. And I'm, I praise God for that. I, I might not know what that is like, but uh, to have a father. But God is my father. And there's so many kids that I get to mentor and stuff like that, that, you know... Um, they're my kids um, at through the door, which is kind of cool too. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, and then there's that little bit too of that promise that God will have victory over His enemies. Um, one of the other things that stood out is that belief that David had that God will live on this mountain forever. Um, not realizing kind of that. So, you know, David could do this and he could be such, so influential, even though only had part of the picture. And I think that's also really cool. It's not untrue, but it's limiting God, right? So yeah, God is at Mount Sinai or whatever forever, but he's also like everywhere, right? Um, God isn't solely there anymore the ark of the covenant moved there's like all these things that ended up happening so um i i really like that i find it really encouraging as we learn about god and we get inspired uh by what god is doing in our lives we don't have to wait to have everything perfect we can share the good news even when we don't have that complete picture yet god is doing this Oh, did you know that God died for our sins? That, you know, we can be forgiven. We can start at that base level. I think that's a good thing. And throughout, um, you know, 68, it's praising what God has done. Securing the present and praising God now. So, as we transition into prayer, I just want to take a second to maybe silently think about what God has done in our lives, what he's gotten us through. And then I will uh, start praying um, after that. So let's take a minute or, or two to just um, think about what God has gotten us through and lift it up to God in prayer. JC, for all the things that you brought to our minds and to our hearts just now and for so much more, we thank you. We thank you for showing your love, your powers of restoration, your, your love, your ability to forgive. I thank you for doing that then and for everything that you're doing now. And that we can turn to you in joy, saying, you got us through that. You are doing a great work in us and through us now. And you are not done yet because our future is secure with you in heaven. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being awesome. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. May the righteous run into it and be saved. May we be known as your friends, your fathers, your sons, your daughters. You are a father to the fatherless, something that I know all too well. You are a defender of the widows. You're close to the brokenhearted and the meek. Thank you. And may we be able to follow in your footsteps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And I'm reminded of how I've been praying most of this time through Psalms. And it's that Micah 6, 8 verse, O oh, mere mortal, this is what I require of you, declares the Lord. To love, or sorry, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you, Lord. So help us to do that too. In your amazing, awesome name, Lord. The Lord is awesome. I, I'm so glad that, that sentence was in what we read today. In your name, Lord. Amen. All right. Thank you guys very much. Have a fantastic rest of your day. God bless.